Hi everyone! We've heard a lot about statues and monuments in the news. Some people are saying we have to tear them down. Some people are saying we have to protect them. So I decided to explore some statues and monuments around my hometown of San Francisco and explore the question, whose stories are these monuments telling and whose stories are left out? Today I'm here at a monument called the Pioneer Mother's Memorial and it's in Golden Gate Park. It's the only statue of a woman in Golden Gate Park. I've passed this statue many times, and like most people, I didn't really think much about it. Mostly my experience was as an educator, passing her with children and having them giggle at the naked children that are part of the statue. It was built in 1915 for something called the Panama Pacific International Exposition. The fair was supposedly to celebrate the opening of the Panama Canal, which would allow much faster travel to San Francisco but even more than that, the fair was to celebrate San Francisco's recovery from the brutal 1906 earthquake. You can think of it like when a city hosts the Olympics today and they want to show all the best aspects of their city to the world. So this statue showed how San Franciscans of 1915 wanted to tell their story to the world. And when I say San Franciscans, I mean white wealthy San Franciscans because those are the people who could afford to make a big old statue. The monument depicts a pioneer woman traveling overland to San Francisco during the Gold Rush era. The original design was by an artist named Charles Grayfly and had her dressed in Native American clothing. This horrified the people at the time and they protested and had it altered to what it is now traditional European style clothing. The design of the statue was to showcase traditional Christian motherhood of these pioneer women. The lady who organized the fundraising and design of the statue named Ella Miggles was a famous author who married three times, including a dude 20 years younger than her, and was divorced once, which was extremely rare for a woman in those days. So I'm guessing she thought traditional Christian motherhood was for other people. Here is an excerpt of her book called Fairy Tale of the White Man to show some of the ideas that influenced her. He called them all together and bade them to look upon the terrible consequences of white fighting white, when all they needed was to help each other. He warned them against jealousy and envy and covetousness, and assured them that destruction would be their share unless they could learn to unite for the common good. He told them that the blacks, the browns, and the yellows were lead against their survival, and that the whites would be wiped out if they did not stand together. Wow. So, after the exposition, the statue was forgotten and left in the garbage. It was found in 1940 and restored by a group called the Native Daughters of the Golden West. Now this group and its male counterpart, the Native Sons of the Golden West, had a long history of anti-Asian racism. And at the time in the 1940s, the Native Sons of the Golden West were lobbying the government to take away citizenship from Japanese Americans. So, just like when this statue was created over a hundred years ago, the monuments in our public places tell the story of who we are and what we value. Whose stories are being told and whose stories are being left out? These are the questions we should think about as we come to re-examine the role of monuments in our public memory. Thank you for watching.